overall water concentration on two sides will stay the same or water would try to make the concentration the same good. Now here is a funny thing can I stop this movement of water. So let us say we go back to the original situation here is water this was originally up to this point up to here we have more solutes here you know that the water is going to want to try to move so it is really happy right and it wants to go in this direction so saying that I'm going to be going in this direction do you think it's going to go there it is if it can move through the semi permeable membrane can I stop it from going there yes I can put a membrane which is not permeable to water that would stop it or what I can do is this so pay attention this, this is important. So what I can do is this I can put pressure on this side. So for example just like a syringe which has a little piston in it and you can use that piston to press on the fluid just like that if I put a piston here which has a little if I put a piston in here and then I press down I press down on this piston what will happen now so so on one end the water is trying to move here so there is a force which is moving water towards the side that is the force of osmosis and that is because the water is trying to go from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. Now I am pressing on this side of the fluid column via a piston. So what am I doing I am actually opposing this force. So if this force is here let us say this is the size of the force for the water to move on this side now I am exerting a counter acting force via this piston which is going to if it is equal then it is going to stop that water from moving. Now if I can measure so if I put some sort of a measurement device over here and I can then measure that how much so a nice little device here. So if I can measure what is the amount of pressure I am exerting then I can measure how much force with which water is trying to move to this compartment that would be called the osmotic pressure that will be called the osmotic pressure. So do not forget about that that we can actually measure how much of the uh, pressure is exerted on this membrane by the water to try to move from that side to this side and we can measure it and that would be called the osmotic pressure. So now let us see one more thing before we uh, move on from this topic how do we what are the units of this thing what is the driver of osmosis what are the units how do we say the osmotic pressure and how do we correlate with the concentration. So the first thing to understand. The first thing to understand is osmosis is due to the concentration of the particles not due to the charges or the sizes or the shapes or the or the uh, do the particles look red or blue or whatever. So let us say I have a container here in this container I have a semi permeable membrane I have water now in this container I have some solutes so I have some solutes with the smaller size I have some solutes with the bigger size I have some solute with the other shape right. So maybe these bigger guys are proteins maybe these smaller ones are sodiums or chlorides or bicarbs and so on I have solutes of various shapes charges and sizes okay they all will exert 
the similar osmotic pressure. They would all exert the pull on the water which is going to be equal. What that means is this guy here who is bigger than this guy, this one is not going to exert more force than this. So, it is a concentration measurement, it is a concentration which is the driver for the water to move not the shape or amount of solute, it is a concentration. So, amount of solute is going to move uh, play into the concentration, so it is a concentration and not sizes, so that is one thing. So, if it is something which is related to the concentration, then how do we actually measure the concentration of various atoms, so that we can then see what is the amount of uh, osmotic pressure exerted. So, to do that this is what we will do, let us uh, try to understand the concept of a mole before we talk about the concentration. So, the mole is actually a concentration measurement, what that means is this, so again I am not going to go into the big detail, but what that means is that 6.02 multiplied by 10 is power 24 if I am getting the recalling that number correctly. If we have a um, if we have a substance who which has 6.02 multiplied by 10 is power 24 number number of particles. So that means if we have sodium chloride or we have sodiums or we have chlorides, the number of particles have to be this or we have a protein. So, the number of particle of these substances if these are this then that would be 1 mole, but the question is really how do we actually understand the mole, this is just the concentration that is what I was trying to convey. How you calculate Yeah, yeah, so correct. So, one dozen bikes or one dozen eggs or one dozen chairs, they all have the same concentration, absolutely. So, you are right. So, let us say that we have the sodium chloride. To calculate one mole of the sodium chloride, what we do is we understand that how many particles of sodium how much gram weight they would generate if the number was 6.02 multiplied by 10 is power 24. So, uh, if you go to the periodic table the concentration of this 6.02 10 is power 24 atoms of sodium have a molecular or atomic weight of 22.9 grams I believe. Right. So, if you take what this means is this is a very important concept you should as a doctor be able to uh, measure or calculate if need be, normally you do not need to, but you can calculate it. So, if you have sodium what is 1 mole of sodium, 1 mole of sodium will mean that we have 6.02 multiplied by 10 is power 24 particles of sodium, these number of particles of sodium make up 22.9 grams. So, that means if you take exactly 22.9 grams of sodium that would make 1 mole of sodium. Okay. If you take now on the other hand if you go to periodic table and you look up chloride the atomic weight of chloride I believe is about 35.5 grams. So, what does that mean? That means that if you take chloride similar number of atoms of chloride then they would make 35.5 grams. So, now if I told you that hey can you calculate the 1 mole of sodium chloride that would mean what you do is you pick up this number and you pick up this number and you add them. So, that would become somewhere about 38.5 grams. Oh, sorry 58.5 grams right yeah about 58.5 grams. So, 58.5 grams of sodium chloride 
can be called as one mole. 